to present our Campus Sustainability Initiative, proposing a circular student-centric approach to making BC a greener campus. Before we begin, uh, I'd like to introduce our multidisciplinary team, coming from three different schools at BC, um, bounded by our common passion of sustainability. My name is sang Park. I study computer science. I minor in environmental studies. And I'm bringing the technical background to this presentation. I'm Oliver, I study finance and entrepreneurship in CSOM, and I helped to make sure that this proposal was really practical and made a lot of financial sense. Hey guys, my name is Dylan, I study education and psychology in the Lynch School, and I'm also a global shaper in the World Economic Forum, where I've worked on environmental sustainability initiatives with notable figures including Mayor Michelle Wu in the greater Boston area. BC Dining has made great recent strides in making our interactions with food more sustainable. Uh, some notable successes include our integration of Lean Path, our work with Every Bite Counts, and our partnership with Save That Stuff. Still, there are areas for improvement, and our heavy reliance on outsourcing our food waste management disconnects us from our food waste and the sustainable byproducts that it generates. Additionally, due to a lack of visibility, much of our initiatives and sustainability work goes unnoticed by the student body. Our proposal partners with BC-founded Ecotone Renewables, as well as BC's Eco Pledge and the Schiller Institute, to propose a circular, student-centric approach to sustainability that will reduce our environmental footprint, make our grass greener, engage the student body, and save us tens of thousands of dollars annually in the process. So, for context, Boston College Dining has made great strides in the effective management of food waste in the alignment with EPA goals. As you can see in the diagram below, that's the EPA goals. It, as you can see, it's divided into four sections. Source reduction, feed, feed hungry people, industrial uses, and composting before it all goes to landfill. And we believe that BC has done a really great job in um, tackling all these categories. Uh, unique a la carte dining system leads to lower waste than other schools. Our partnership with VPAT, food waste prevention technology, has helped facilitate 62% reduction in waste. And furthermore, every bite counts packages salvageable food for loving spoonfuls. And our partnership with Save That Stuff provides an avenue for waste management in alignment with EPA industrial usage goals. Still, there is some room for improvement. We spoke with Jane Fulton, the student sustainability manager at BC Dining, and she pointed out that it's really hard to get student engagement because they are students. And so we looked into this issue of student engagement, and what we found was that it wasn't necessarily due to a lack of marketing, but a more, there's a more systemic thing in which BC takes sources food onto campus and then outsources the management of our waste, and that seems to disconnect Boston College from the sustainable cycle of food and waste. When we outsource to save that stuff, we're outsourcing our waste and our responsibility to deal with it. And even when that waste is converted into energy in alignment with EPA goals, that energy doesn't find its way back to Boston College's campus. And so our proposal is that addressing sustainability on campus in a closed cyclical capacity will be the most effective means of limiting our waste and our carbon footprint. Additionally, in making this really visible and in engaging the student body throughout the process will help to tackle this uh, difficulty in engaging the student community on sustainability initiatives. So we've been talking about creating a cyclical ecosystem a lot, and I'd like to explain what, what we mean by creating a cyclical ecosystem. First, everything begins at um, managing everything on site. Uh, with our partnership with Ecotone, we'll be able to create a sustainable fertilizer at BC, fueling our on-campus greens, which includes both landscaping and our proposal um, greenhouses. And in those greenhouses, we'll be creating all those crops, all these fruits, and then we'll return back to BC Dining. And the left foot from BC Dining goes back to Ecotone, creating uh, closing the loop and creating a cycle. This all brings back to our thesis, engaging with waste on site will enable greater community buy-in and make BC more sustainable. So now we'll explain more about our strategy and the first pillar to our cycle is a partnership with Ecotone Renewables, which was founded by Elliot Bennett who graduated Boston College in 2021 and their company provides a state-of-the-art approach to on-site waste management. In, in specifics, they use existing reactor technology where they recapture otherwise lost revenue and nutrients through their eco, in their highly scalable circular ecosystem through their product called Zeus. And Zeus, in short, is basically a heavily modded out container that uh, processes more than 70 tons of food waste on an annual basis and has a 20-year lifespan. 
Furthermore, their fully automated and patented weight sorting system is a huge plus, as we know that Boston College students don't do the best job in organizing their waste when they throw it out on BC Dining, and this successfully sorts out plastic, glass, and metal. And finally, this, uh, this product is also maintained by a proprietary mobile application, which makes it super easy for students to manage and provides real-time data analytics. In terms of our implementation strategy, uh, given that the Zeus's capacity is 70 tons on an annual basis, we've looked at all the dining halls on campus. We believe McElroy will be the perfect fit, as in the 2022-2023 academic year, they produce around 59 tons of food waste. Hence, through the Zeus, this will handle 100% of McElroy's waste, contributing to an aggregate waste of 12% on campus. We understand that putting a product like this on Boston College could be a pretty hefty investment of human capital. Some people might have more responsibilities, some people, we, we, might, we, might, sorry, we might need to hire more people. But our proposed suggestion to this is that we will be working with the Schiller Institute to convert this into an undergraduate research opportunity. In particular, the maintenance and the production and the collection of fertilizer will be done by undergraduate researchers while also making it into an academic endeavor where they can learn about composting, renewable energy, and organic chemistry. And we've spoken with Vice Provost Sunan Bhattacharya about this endeavor and he is in support of this initiative. In terms of the location, um, we, will, we suggest it in the diagram below of our Photoshop potential model. Um, the location will be nearby the garbage area in Boston College, which is highly visible to students, making it um, highly attractive, but it's also an unused area that is very convenient for BC Dining faculty to put their waste in the Zeus. A byproduct of the Zeus is what they call the soy sauce, which is the world's first high-performing carbon-negative fertilizer, which is produced by the Zeus. Not only would this save Boston College $35,000 annually and divert 90 pounds of carbon dioxide per gallon produced, most importantly it produces 50,000 pounds of organic fertilizer, which is more than enough to cover the 40,500 pounds bought by BC landscaping, athletics, and other sustainability endeavors. Boston College is a very green campus with 117 acres of grass, flowers, and lawns, making this a super attractive uh, benefit. The remaining 95,000 uh, pounds of fertilizer will be going into our suggested on-campus carbon zero plastic bottle greenhouse. For context, this 24 by 18 foot greenhouse will be built just with plastic bottles. It will take around 4,200 recycled two liter bottles. Furthermore, there will be minimal cost and it is self-watering to an extent as the water would seep into the smaller gaps. And most importantly, for our research, it will be raising the temperature inside by 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Furthermore, this is an amazing opportunity to uh, keep away recycled bottles from landfills. And we've already received uh, EcoPledge, which is a student organization on campus, their endorsement, where they will be managing our, uh, our greenhouse as they already have experience with maintaining the garden. In terms of cost and logistics, there will be an initial cost with soil, starter plants, etc., of around $300. And there will be a monthly cost of only water, which is only $4 to $6. Based on our research and looking at nearby universities on their on-campus gardens, these five crops were the most uh, economically beneficial, high yield, and can maintain the cold Boston weather. It led, it led us up to strawberries, spinach, lettuce, herbs, and radish. I can look collectively on a monthly basis, uh, this would yield 120 pounds of fresh, ethically grown produce, which using average grocery prices nearby would account us to around $564 per month of fresh produce. That being said, with the surplus of freshly grown produce, we have two recommended strategies of how this could circle back into the BC dining ecosystem. Number one is the more obvious approach. This could contribute in reducing dining expenses, diversifying the menu, or expanding upon existing initiatives like Fresh to Table. Our second is a little more niche, as we would like to expand upon the current farmer's market initiative to target particularly off-campus households who are typically off the meal plan and do not support BC Dining's revenue. And by selling produce that is grown ethically, organic, at a cheaper price, we believe this could increase Boston College's revenue. And hence, through our proposed cyclical approach, we will successfully convert food waste into more food, all while engaging with the BC student body to maintain every process of the cycle. Now let's take a look at the environmental impact of our proposal. The Zeus is able to produce 90 gallons of soil sauce each week, and for each gallon produced, we are diverting 90 pounds of carbon from the atmosphere. So that means that each year we'll be diverting 420,000 pounds of carbon from the atmosphere through the Zeus and its production of soil sauce. Additionally, all 40,500 pounds of organic and non-organic fertilizer used by BC Landscaping and Athletics Departments will be replaced with fully OMRI certified organic fertilizer that is produced sustainably here on campus. Additionally, we'll be handling 120,000 pounds of MAC Dining Hall waste. 
on site, and this will avoid transportation-related carbon uh, emissions. And finally, we'll be saving more than 4,000 water bottles in, from landfill in the construction of our on-campus greenhouse. Ultimately, our sustainable solution, in addition to creating a closed student-engaging ecosystem for our waste, has significant environmental benefits, reducing the footprint of our campus in multiple capacities. Now let's talk about the financial implications. The really exciting thing here is that by capturing the value of our food waste and using it on campus and on campus initiatives, we can anticipate some really exciting financial benefits. And everything starts with our investment in Ecotone. They offer two financing structures for the Zeus, and the first of which is a $40,000 upfront CapEx investment, and this will cover the setup costs and operational costs over the 20 year useful life. They also offer a $700 monthly uh, OPEX option, but we do not recommend this, and based on our PV calculations, this will be a lot more expensive in the long run. Uh, so the good news is that these costs can be offset really quickly. We expect to break even within the first year, uh, and that's partly due to a $3,600 proposed uh, savings on a reduced Save That Stuff contract. Currently, we're operating on a flat fee-based contract, but if we're handling a large amount of food waste on site and removing one of the dining halls in their food waste collection route, we believe that it's really reasonable based on conservative industry estimates of $60 per ton and 60 tons saved per year. $3,600 seems very reasonable. Additionally and excitingly is $35,000 in annual savings on fertilizer. Again, we're covering 100% of the 40,500 pounds of organic and non-organic fertilizer used by Boston College Athletics and Landscaping Departments. Finally, $5,000 in produce will be harvested by EcoPledge from our greenhouse each year. We'll be offering somewhere around 20 to 30% of that produce to EcoPledge for maintaining and operating and harvesting things from this greenhouse. But that'll leave us with more than $3,000 worth of produce each year for BC Dining to be sold back through dining halls or in the farmer's market that we proposed. All in, this is total annual savings beginning in year two of $42,600. And just to quickly recap on that financial timeline, starts with a $40,000 initial investment. By the end of year one, we should be more than broken even. By the end of year two, $45,000 cash flow positive, and in the remaining 19 years, we'll have no more cash outflows, annual savings of over $40,000 each year. And we're very excited about this plan and hope to see it get implemented in the future. And thank you for your time today, and we're happy to answer any questions. Okay, so we have about five minutes for questions. Food. You guys did a great job. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, for the food waste estimates, is that food waste that students are, is that capturing food waste from the students of what they're composting? Is that total trash? Is that food that's left over in the back of the house? What yeah, is so that the, representing? Yeah, these food waste estimates, like, are you talking about like from Mac Dining Hall? Yeah. 5910. So this is actually calculated by Save That Stuff. They measure the weight on their organic truck route. So we have data on how much. Uh, weight in food waste they're actually handling. So this is all in the organic side. So this is all things that should be uh, ideally able to go into the Zeus and it will be able to sort any additional weight uh, in that capacity. But yeah, it should be focused on just food waste and compostable products. So it's food that's all, as of right now, are already going to yeah, yeah. waste. So based, based on that number, it's front of house and back of house. Yeah, and does it already exclude food that's being donated to Yes, so this is the stuff that's going, with, right now I would say that stuff to their facility for energy which goes somewhere else. Awesome. Thank you. So I, I echo Philip in that you guys did a great job and the way you, you laid it out, you did a nice job. Um, my question is on Zeus. Who puts the stuff into Zeus? Yeah, so, so it's outside, but how does, it, how does the product get from inside to outside? Yeah, that's why we uh, put the Zeus in this location. Right now, we're leaving out compost bins for say that stuff to pick up. The only difference is this has a big hole where you just dump the bin in. So instead of just leaving the bin outside, They'll dump it into the latch so on the, the back dining of the staff will put it in. Yeah, the dining staff just dumps it in. It'll be a slight increase, but pretty pretty reasonable. Um, and who's building the greenhouse out of the bottles? So we've already gotten uh, Eco Pledge's endorsement and a partnership. We've already sent out emails and talked with them. They're more than happy to implement this should this go along and so they build across the house. So yes. you take the bottles from dining, what dining was typically recycling, and you would build. Yeah, uh, based on our research, it typically only takes like max a week to implement this, given that it's only using recycled water bottles and a couple of other you know, rudimentary materials like wood and just glue, so it wouldn't be that big of an implementation uh, time lag. So first, I, I'm, I'm so looking forward to when you all are in charge of water <laughs> systems, because you're really thinking about a systemic change, and, and kudos to you for going so ambitious. 
I think some of my questions are just feasibility because you're suggesting like really major structural changes, like producing food in the greenhouses and getting that to dining is like a major undertaking, like in terms of quantity and like that scale would not be enough to feed to make lettuce and salads for our students. Um, as well as just the thinking about, I think it was a soil sauce, so that's like a liquid manure, I'm assuming. Um, I'm guessing BC doesn't use liquid fertilizer, it uses like pellets and stuff. So that's another like change yeah. in like the, I don't know. the actual I don't know. answer. Yeah, so we use a combination of organic and non-organic fertilizer, some of which is pellets, some of which is liquid. The good thing about this fertilizer is it's organic and sustainably produced, and it can be used for all of the applications that we need fertilizer for, most of which is maintaining our large campus screens on athletics fields and grass. So it is a really effective solution, and it's the one that's most environmentally beneficial. So, so you've talked to facilities about like, that they could make use of this like, throughout mm -hmm. the landscape? Yeah, this is, like, the actual implementation of how we get this fertilizer to them and like their processes of fertilizing the field suite, that would be like the next step. But this could be utilized for the applications that we that they use it for on campus. Uh, based I on mean, just maybe, maybe a quick question on this. Were you able to talk with the facilities team to talk to them specifically about their assessment on the feasibility of changing to a new product for fertilizer? Yeah, we were in communication with Bruce Dixon, and he was kind of like our middleman. So we sent him questions, and he brought us back answers. We weren't able to get as much specific information as we wanted. This was where we sourced our like amount of wheat, the kinds of fertilizer that they're using. But that's about all the information we had. The rest was our best estimates and looking at kind of what the applications are and uh, what that means in other cases. Um, and I just wanted to circle back on your question about, I guess, the scale and sizeability of this. So. In fact, uh, UMass Amherst and UMass Lowell does an amazing program on their on-campus gardens. In fact, they have around a pretty big margin of produce that goes back into their dining systems. That's where most of our ideas came from. But furthermore, we, want, we just want to iterate that this is a phased approach, and given how cheap it is to build these, we could build more on campus given the capacity. So we could potentially see a phased approach where we could have more gardens on campus, or right now, given the scale, we could only go to like Tully's, Hillside, smaller dining halls that only need smaller amounts of food, like salads and et cetera. UMass has lots of fields too, and they have a lot more students like engaged in growing food. Mm -hmm. So it's like they have just a bigger operation as a land. And that culture is what we would like to bring to Boston College. Yeah, which as a liberal arts school versus land grant, they have yeah. a mission to like engage in the agricultural production and outreach and so forth. So it may be harder to make that sort of landscape change at BC, but I love the idea of it and I would, you know, be super supportive of it as well. I just I think there might be some like barriers to getting it done here. And one thing that I do want to highlight is that in terms of scale, we're also not talking about managing a hundred percent of our campus's food waste on site. Uh, it makes a lot of sense in the scale that we're doing at Mac because it can cut back on our current save that subcontract and it produces a reasonable amount of fertilizer for our campus. Mm -hmm. Like building more Zeus's to handle all of it probably wouldn't be as financially feasible. And say that stuff is a good large scale option for like picking up from different dining halls. So when we spoke with Jane, she said that there would be an issue if we had like centralized Zeus's and we had PC Dining was responsible themselves for bringing all of it. So this is kind of like a smaller scale solution, but we want to see kind of this circularity and sustainability on campus. And if we make it really visible, if we engage students throughout the process, I think it can also help to just keep BC as a community more engaged and aware of what we're doing with sustainability at BC. Yeah. We have time for like one more question if anyone has something. So these will be near dorms. I'm just curious, do they attract uh, friendly creatures or less friendly creatures? Is that a worry? Yeah, uh, because I mean, you know, you might just worry that there's skunks and rats yeah. and rats and the like. I think that's a great question. Yeah, and right near where the kids are living. Mm, yeah, so we've actually spoken with Elliot Bennett several times, and based on his experiences working with companies like Meta, Dunkin' Donuts, where they've had similar issues, given that this is already inside a modded out container, there has been no problems with um, anything with odor or um, kind of like attracting any animals nearby. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.